What's up guys, Tenacious here, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 build guide. Now picture this right here. You're running up and down White Springs Resort main hallway, and every robot in the building is on your ass. I mean all the Protectrons, all the Mr. Handys, all the Assaultrons, and all the laser turrets. And you're tanking it all. No stims, no aid, you're barely taking any damage. Looks pretty tanky, right? Yeah, there's a lot of serendipity and a lot of ricochet popping off. So a lot of the damage you are actually avoiding. However, when I do take damage, it's very little. And that's what's very important as well. And it's not just against robots, in case you're wondering. This is purely an example. But we all know how hard those Assaultron lasers hit. Or how much a barrage of lasers can shred you up. But with this build, that doesn't happen. Now, I started playing with this about a week ago. I spent a whole day testing and tweaking this build. And believe me when I say, this is tankier than most power armor builds out there. And almost as tanky as your most solid power armor builds. I know this because I am a tanky power armor build myself. Now, it is a universal build, so it can be achieved at high health as well by switching a few cards and points around, but it is more tanky as a bloodied build, more so for the serendipity and nerd rage, and quite possibly one of the tankiest non-power armor builds you'll ever see. Now, it's great being tanky and all, but it wouldn't be much of a tank if it couldn't hit for shit, right? Well, with this build, it isn't just tanky. It also hits like a behemoth on Radroach, obviously. I mean, you didn't actually think I was going to make a tanky build that did no damage. It's me we're talking about. So with this, I've also managed to squeeze in every major damage output card, bar one. But we'll touch on that later. This here, guys, is a tenacious, ultimate endgame, no power armor, tank build. Fuck me, that's a mouthful. Let's go. So I've had it in my head for a while to put something like this together and see how well I could make it work. But I'd been grinding for a very specific set of armor before I'd done full testing and any sort of showcase. Besides that, I always see so many players out there across the Fallout community that don't like using power armor because it's clunky and it can somewhat restrict their carry weight, etc. But they like the tankiness of it and quite rightly so because power armor is very tanky. For anyone that doesn't know, power armor has a hidden damage reduction of 42% straight off the bat. So that is very hard to compete with. But this build right here comes pretty damn close because I've tested the same setup in and out of my power armor with the same legendary effects and there isn't a massive difference. Also on the other hand, I see a lot of chat about players struggling for tankiness with their bloody builds as well. So this right here is a build for all you guys, or at the very least, something to work towards. But before we jump right in guys, you know the drill, bash that like button and beam that subscribe, as that will help the channel and me massively as we head towards that almighty 500 sub mark. I do drop regular Fallout 76 videos, from PvP to build guides, farming guides and other weird and wonderful content. So if this is what you're into, I highly recommend doing so. Also guys, I'll leave timestamps in the description for easy navigation if you only want to check out a certain portion of the video. But as always, if you do that, you'll be missing out on my amazing Scottish chat. So moving on. When I say this is an endgame build, I really mean it. I'm only able to achieve this because of my level and the amount of investment I've put into ranking up legendary specials. Since moving over to Xbox from PS six months ago, I'm now over level 600 on my main. And besides some other perks I need for certain setups, I also have four legendary specials at rank three and one maxed out. So this gives me a lot of space in my perk card deck. Now, 600 is nothing compared to a lot of players out there, 
So some of you will have every special maxed out, therefore you'll be able to do this a bit better than me. But today, I'm covering the fundamentals of the build. As a quick rundown of the gear before we get into the perk cards, and to satisfy your curiosity, I'm running a full set of Overeaters Secret Service. And it's not an overly special set. There's no Sentinel or Cav, and only one power piece. So in essence, you could get away with a full one-star set if you wanted. Now, I have tested this in Custom Worlds as well, using heavy BOS, and the build still has the same effect. So don't be disheartened just because I have Secret Service. All you would lose is a little bit of damage and energy resistance. So besides Secret Service being the joint tankiest armor in the game, with Overeaters, you gain up to a 6% damage reduction per piece if your food and water bars are above 81%, which is a 30% damage reduction with a full set, which is massive. And for anyone that doesn't know exactly how Overeaters works, basically per piece, you gain 3% damage reduction for both bars, food and water, which equals 6% in total. So you could have one bar full and the other empty for a 3% reduction. Anything below 81% full and the damage reduction starts dropping each 20% your bar falls. And between 0 and 20%, you gain no damage reduction at all. So it is very important to stay well fed and hydrated, which gives you a natural HP and AP boost anyway. So at full buff, the Overeaters is now the best armor in the game, as it's the only prefix that offers a flat damage reduction, which is major when it comes to a bloody power armor build that runs emergency protocols, as this will grant a total of 80% damage reduction. This is why the Overeaters power armor build is so damn tanky for PvE, However, with this build here, the Serendipity compensates for that pretty well, with almost a 50% chance to avoid damage altogether, hence making it almost as tanky overall as a good solid power armor build. And as far as the weapons go, these are purely down to personal choice. There's no right or wrong weapons for the build, obviously. But me personally, I do feel that anti-armor works best for a non-power armor build, to somewhat compensate for the loss of stabilised, because that does give all your weapons an anti-armor effect anyway, while you're in power armor. I do use an anti-armor explosive LMG mainly, but I sometimes use my BE-50 Cal and my GE Plasma with this build, and I just pop a few Formula P to compensate for the shocking accuracy. <laughs> so that covers the gear. Now let's have a quick look at the mutations, because these play a massive part in the build as well. So we've got Adrenal Reaction for extra weapon damage at low health. We've got Bird Bones for a softer landing when we're jetpacking and a boost to AP. Carnivore, because I'm not a vegetarian. Empath, to add even more tankiness when I'm on a team with other empaths. Now we'll come back to this because this is a very important one. Also, we've got Grounded for tankiness against energy. Healing Factor to auto heal after I decimate everything in my path. Herd Mentality to boost all my specials. And do note guys, this works even if you're on a public team on your own. So it's kind of retarded not to have this. Marsupial, so I can jump up sidewalks without face planting them. And Scaly Skin for extra tankiness against ballistic and energy. And finally Speed Demon to move and reload quicker. Now with Empath guys, this is very important for the build as well. It's generally only used for PvP, which most of you guys watching my channel will know all about. However, for those that aren't familiar with it, this is an amazing team mutation for those who always run in a team with friends. So if you all have Empath, you all share a further 25% damage reduction, and that's not including the Strange in Numbers boost. However, you do 100% need Class Freak with this mutation, otherwise you take 25% more damage when not in a team with other Empaths. But with Class Freak, that's reduced to 6%. But with other Empaths, and Stranger Numbers, you'll get a 33% damage reduction, which is huge again. It's almost as if wearing two sets of Overeaters. So yeah, for team players, I highly recommend this, because I have this going in all of my footage. 
So it's not all about the armor and the perp cards. So bear that in mind. Right, let's get down to brass tacks then. The moment you've all been waiting for. Time for the perp cards. Hold the fuck up. What is this pish? You don't need a big colossal introduction. It's just a set of perp cards. <laughs> Let's have a look at the perp cards, guys. We'll start with the legendary perp cards because they're pretty straightforward. So I've got lots of additional special points. I've got four cards at rank three and one at rank four. Now, it doesn't particularly matter which special you rank up, as long as it's not a special that you don't want or need any points in. In my case, it's Perception. That sits at a flat one. Then, the last card is kind of situational, so you can swap this in and out, depending on the situation. I generally keep it at taking one for the team, for even more damage, like we're not doing enough already. But for a bit of extra tankiness when coming up against anything poisonous, like my alert kings and queens, I can swap that out for Funky Duds. And if I was doing Errol, I'd swap that out for Sizzling Style as well. Now for the main bad boy deck itself. As you can see, it's a very niche setup. I am sacrificing carry weight to achieve this. As you'll see, I have no carry weight cards but my inventory management is pretty on point for this. But if this is something you struggle with, then there are some small adjustments you can make to compensate for that, like swapping three blocker for one and adding bandolier, etc. But personally, I had to dump a lot onto my alt account. So the main object of the build was obviously tankiness, but also maintaining as much damage output as possible. And this was the end result after a whole day of testing, tweaking, and trying out different combinations of cards, etc. And do bear in mind, guys, although this is a setup for a heavy gunner, you can still achieve this for other playstyles, definitely for melee and shotgunner. But if for commando, for example, you would just swap all the strength for perception. The fundamentals are still the same, but it obviously is better as a strength setup because you can get that big buff from Barbarian. So straight from the top guys, we've got 15 Strength, 1 Perception, 15 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 8 Intelligence, 15 Agility, and 15 Luck. That's a lot of fucking points. In Strength, we've got all the Heavy Gunner cards, obviously. Then Barbarian for extra damage resist. With 15 Strength, we get an extra 60 DR. And Blocker to take 45% less damage from melee attacks, which is very important for the harder hitting melee attacks, especially those scorchy wing slaps, which is rather demoralizing as well. I mean, imagine getting slapped in the face with a wing. How embarrassing. Anyway, perception isn't required for a heavy build, so the only logical card to slot in there is a bit of extra energy resistance. But if I had three more points, that would obviously be maxed out as well. Endurance, we've got Ironclad for another 50 DR and ER. Life Giver for an extra 45 max HP, which does help bolster that 20% nerd raise level as well. Fireproof for resistance against explosions and fire. And Lead Belly, because we're a bloodied overeaters build, we don't want to be messing up those rads when eating or drinking, as we'll need to keep on top of that by any means necessary. Charisma. 3 Suppressor, because we are favouring tankiness over Tenderizer in this instance. Unfortunately, we can't fit both in at the moment. And Stranger Numbers to boost all your mutations by 25%. More so for the Empath, Grounded and Scaly Skin for the extra tankiness and Adrenal Reaction to do more damage at low health. Intelligence, Max Demo Expert to maximise damage output with our explosive weapons. And of course, Nerd Rage for all those additional buffs at low health. But with that in mind, if you do favour faster fire rate weapons over explosive, then you can save yourself 5 perk points. 
or even invest them somewhere else. So that's something to note. Agility, max adrenal reaction for up to a 60% damage buff on consecutive kills. One of the most important cards to maximize damage. Dodgy, to avoid 30% of incoming damage at the cost of action points. Evasive, very much like Barbarian, this grants additional energy and damage resistance to higher your agility. And with this, we get maximum buff with 15 agility. Moving target. In my opinion, this is the least important tanky card, but it still adds to the resistance nonetheless while sprinting, which is a sort of cavalier effect. And lastly, Action Boy 1. To buff up that agility for the tanky cards, and this can also be swapped out for Born Survivor for the full health setup, but we'll talk about that afterwards. And finally, Luck. So, bloody mess for extra damage. Ricochet for an 18% chance to deflect ranged damage from enemies, which does play a large part in the tankiness. Class Freak to massively reduce the debuffs from all your mutations. And of course, probably the most important card in the build, Serendipity. Almost a 50% chance to avoid damage. And this coupled with Ricochet is just insane. Starts genes for mutation control, and last but not least, one gun army. Not overly important in my opinion, as you will melt most things before you even have a chance to stagger them, but I just feel more comfortable having it there, as it can help cripple the bigger and tougher mobs. So that's the setup for the bloodied build guys, but say you just point blank refuse to run a bloodied build, what could we do? Well. If we are not at low health, then we don't require Serendipity, so we can drop that, and those three points we can move into Charisma, and I'll tell you why in a minute. In Agility, we switch out Action Boy for Born Survivor, as I mentioned, and then if by some miracle your health does drop low enough, you'll auto-proc a stim at 20% health, and if we swap Nerd Rage for First Aid, that auto-stim will heal 45% more health. And then, with Charisma, we add Field Surgeon to make that auto stim that heals 45% more work quicker. And we have a spare point to throw in a bit of Tenderizer. Or we could go 3 Tenderizer and 1 Suppressor for full health. And that would look something like this. So that's it in favour of Suppressor. And then in favour of Tenderizer, voila! So now that we've covered the gear, mutations and the perk cards, let's see what the stats actually look like. So this is the base stats on a team with strange numbers. 609 Ballistic and 544 Energy. Decent stats, but it gets better. Now this is what it looks like, fully buffed with chems, food and a Backwoodsman 6. Here, I'd also took an Addictol to wipe my addictions as they lowered your stats. 675 Ballistic, 637 Energy. And HP, 128 on Nerd Rage. Insane numbers. You can get much higher energy resistance than this as well, with an insulated backpack, which is something I'll need to try and get my hands on. But, that's it for your numbers. So there we have it guys, my ultimate endgame non-power armour tank build. In a nutshell, if you don't want to be a food build, then follow this guide. On a serious note though, I do hope you guys enjoy the build and get a little inspiration from it, like some of my previous builds. If you did, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to keep up to date with any future build guides and content that I drop. To check out other build guides, I'll be adding this to my build guides playlist, where you'll find AC-130 PvP guides and one for my extremely OP, unarmed, power armour juggernaut build. Let me know in the comments guys your thoughts and opinions and I'll look forward to chatting about it. So that's it from me guys, as always, thanks for watching, have fun, stay safe, I'm Tenacious, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.